Life is filled with frustrations and difficulties, isn't it? We experience those all the time. And it was no different for the saints. We see in the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles that St. Paul and his companions were undergoing a lot of frustration. Paul was trying to form a Christian community at Corinth, and he felt that it would be so strong that they would automatically welcome all the Gentiles into their community. But that isn't what happened. These, this couple, married couple, Aquila and Priscilla, had been forced out of Rome because the Roman leaders were getting tired of the Jewish controversies being created. So to solve it, they expelled all the Jews from Rome. And Priscilla and Aquila were, were a married couple, and they, and they had to leave. They eventually met up with St. Paul. And they became friends. In fact, Paul lived with them, as the gospel, as the reading says, because he was a tent maker, and so were they. And so he continued to work and make a living and continue to preach about Jesus. And they accomplished a great deal with Paul. But the problem still persisted. And so Paul just said, I'm just going to leave these people, and I'm going to go and create a community of all Gentiles and turn them into Christians, and then everything will work out. So you can see Paul's frustration, but he never gave up. He never gave up. He continued to preach and to teach about Christ because he was so absolutely convinced of the reality of Jesus as the Savior of the world. And we are grateful today for all of his writings. You and I live in a time when we can look back and we can see the whole picture. People then were only beginning to understand Christ and everything that he was teaching. And so we're in a bit different position. In the gospel tonight, Jesus is preparing them for a journey. And he says, I'm going away for a while. He doesn't come right out and say that he's going to die, but that's what his journey is going to be. He will journey to Jerusalem and through the doors of death. But beyond those doors of death will be resurrection and new life. And he would be going to heaven to prepare a place for them and for all of us in heaven. And so Jesus is saying to them, you have to just persevere. There's going to be a time, he says, when you'll weep and mourn and the world will be opposing you. But don't give up. Continue to believe in Christ because your grief will become joy. And that's the hope, isn't it, that we live as Christians that day-to-day -day life can be difficult. There's a lot of joys in life as well. But we're on a journey. It's constantly changing. We're always going forward. And we're going forward to that time when we will be united with Christ in eternity. You can just imagine the joy when we close our eyes and open them up and the gates of heaven open. We have to think about that sometimes. How, what a great joy that will be to see Jesus face to face and be an eternity where there's no more problems or difficulties, but only peace and harmony and eternal life with God. Every time we process up to communion, it's symbolic with a procession of life. When we reach the altar and we receive the body and blood of Christ, it's union with him. We're on that procession to the eternal banquet of Christ in heaven, when not only will we see him under the form of bread and wine, but we will see him face to face. And so every one of our communion processions reminds us of that procession of life. The church is a great, <clears throat> is a great um, gift to us from Jesus because it is in the church and with the power of the Holy Spirit that he continues to lead and guide us always. So tonight we're grateful. And as we process up to communion tonight, let us think about that procession to the eternal kingdom of heaven. Let us stand now and offer our prayers and petitions.